Jairadhamadhava Kunja Bihadi Jairadha Madhava Kunjabi Hadi Kopi Janna Vala Bagiri Vardadi Kopi Janna Vala Bagiri Vardadi Yashodanandana Braja Chana Ranchana Yashodanandana Braja Chana Ranchana Yashodanandana Braja Chana Ranchana Yamunati Ravana Chari Jaya Radha Madhava Kunja Bihari Kopi Janna Vala Bhagiri Vardhari Yashoda Nandana Braja Janna Ranjana Yamunati Ravana Chari Jaya Radha Madhava Kuncha Bihari Jaya Radha Madhava Kunja Bihari Jaya Radha Madhava Kunja Bihari Prem Sikaho Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhunitananda Shri Advaita Gadadhar Shri Vas Adi Gauda Bhakta Vrinda Ki Jai Shri Shri Radha Krishna Gopi Gopi Nashamakun Radha Kun Giri Govardhan Ki Jai Vrindavan Dham Ki Jai Navadvip Dham Ki Jai Ganga Imunamai Ki Jai Tulsi Maharani Ki Jai Bhakti Devi Ki Jai Samaveta Bhakta Vrinda Ki Jai New Govardhan Dham Ki Jai. All glories to the symbol devotees. All glories to the symbol devotees. All glories to the symbol devotees. All glories to Sri Guru and Sri Gauranga. All glories to Sri Prabhupada. <coughs> Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. 
Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya So this morning we were reading from the Srimad Bhagavatam, Canto 4, entitled Creation of the Fourth Order, Chapter 30, the Activities of the Prachetas, we're on Text 1. So if everybody could please repeat after me. Vidura Uvacha Ye Tvayabhi Hita Brahman Sutta Prachini Barhisha Te Rudra Gitena Harim Siddhim Apu Pratosya Kam Viruvacha Ye Tvayabhihita Brahman Sutta Prachini Barhisha Te Rudra Gitena Harim Siddhim Apu Pratosya Kam Viruvacha Ye Tvaya Bihita Brahman Sutta Prachini Barisha Te Rudra Gitena Harim Siddhim Apu Pratosya Kam Viduvacha Ye Tvaya Bihita Brahman Sutta Prachini Barisha Te Rudra Gitena Hidim Siddhim Apu Pratosha Kam Viduvacha Vidur said Ye Those who Tvaya By you Abhihitaha We're spoken about Brahman O Brahmana Sutaha Sons Prachini Barhisha Of King Prachini Barhi Te all of them, Rudra Gitena, by the song composed by Lord Shiva, Harim, the Lord, Siddhim, success, Apuhu, achieved, Pratoshya, having satisfied, Kam, what? Translation and commentary by His Divine Grace, A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Prabhupada. Vidura inquired from Maitreya, O Brahman, you formerly spoke about the sons of Prachinibarhi and informed me that they satisfied the Supreme Personality of Godhead 
by chanting a song composed by Lord Shiva. What did they achieve in this way? Purport. In the beginning, Maitreya Rishi narrated the activities of the sons of Prachinibarhi. These sons went beside a great lake, which was like an ocean. Unfortunately, finding Lord Shiva, they learned how to satisfy the Supreme Personality of Godhead by chanting the songs composed by Lord Shiva. Now their father's attachment for fruit of activities was disapproved by Narada, who therefore kindly instructed Prachinibarhi by telling him the allegorical story of Pranjana. Now Vidura again wanted to hear about Prachinibarhi's sons, and he was especially inquisitive to know what they achieved by satisfying the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Here the words Siddhim Apu, or achieve perfection, are very important. Lord Krishna says in Bhagavad Gita, chapter 7, text 3, Manushyanam sahasreshu kaschit yatata siddhaye out of, min many million, uh, out of many, many millions of people, one may be interested in learning how to attain success in spiritual matters. The supreme success is mentioned also in Bhagavad Gita, chapter 8, text 15. Mam upetya punar janma dukalya mashashvatam napduvanti mahatmana simsidhim paramam gata after attaining me, the great souls, who are yogis in devotion, never return to this temporary world, which is full of miseries, because they have attained the highest perfection. And what is that highest perfection? That is also explained in that verse. The highest perfection is to return home back to Godhead, so that one will not have to return to this material world and transmigrate from one body to another in the dream of material existence. By the grace of Lord Shiva, Prachetas actually attained perfection and returned home back to Godhead after enjoying material facilities to the highest extent. Ma Maitreya will now narrate that to Vidura. Om Agyani Tavadanda Sya Gananjana Shalakaya Chakshulam Militamina Tasmai Shri Gravita Maha Come, Karidvachalam, Pangam, Langa, take it in, but creep at a Mahangan day, she could and did it on an unbancha, cup of the Bishta, creepa, Sindhu, Beva, cha, Patitanam, Pavani, Bill, Vaishnava, Bio, Namona, Maha, Jaya, Shri Krishna, Chaitanya, Prabunitananda, Shri Advaita, Gadadhar, Shivasati, Go, the Bhakta Vrinda, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, 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 Hare Hare, Hare Hare. I'll read the translation again. Vidura inquired from Maitreya, O Brahman, you formerly spoke about the sons of Prachinibarhi and informed me that they satisfied the Supreme Personality of Godhead by chanting a song composed by Lord Shiva. What did they achieve in this way? So Prabhupada, uh, Srila Prabhupada quotes a verse, I mean, excuse me, quotes a Beng Bengali proverb in the seventh uh, canto of the Srimad Bhagavatam in a purport. And the proverb is that um, I built a house for my enjoyment and uh, unfortunately the house burned down. <laughs> That's a proverb. <laughs> um, and we see that happen sometimes. I mean, there are people have house, ins house insurance, right? When we, there was those fires happening up in Northern California some time ago, um, Hasugrami, our Hasugrami used to be here, who's in Gainesville now. He, his parents lived there. <coughs> I visited there once because, um, anyways, Hasugrami, he donated, his parents donated one of their, their van. So I helped drive that van. So I was there for a night and, anyways, cooked some prasadam for them. But, um... So that house, it uh, in those fires, it just burnt down. <laughs> the people, the people, they came to to um, Hasar Grammy's parents' house. And they said, "Well, you got to get out of here, and you got to like get all your, st is, you know, whatever you want, get it now and go." And it was kind of a quick thing. So they just picked up some whatever they picked up, some photo albums or whatever they got. So many books were in that house, like tons of books. Uh, book sh there was bookcases all over the house. But, right, Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur said, if you have all the, you know, 
books in the world burn, and there's only Srimad Bhagavatam or Chaitanya Charitamrita. You, you don't lose anything. But so, um, anyways, their house burnt down. So that happens, and then they had, to, you know, they moved to some other smaller place, and then eventually had to rebuild another house or buy another house. And that happened to Yamuna Devi also, Srila Prabhupada's disciple, up in um, Canada at Sharnagati, um, the property there. And there's these big fires, forest fires, and one was threatening their cabin, and yeah, I think the cabin burned down, but yeah, and. Um, but she, she had to grab a few things. She grabbed one of, uh, one of the things she grabbed was this journal that she had. She used to write often. And it was from her days with Srila Prabhupada and going into her life. And, and that book was published as, um, that, um, by Dina Tarani, her friend, um, as Yamuna Devi, her life and legacy, something like that, two-volume book. But... Uh, you know, at the time, Yamuna Devi, she she didn't she she wasn't really thinking how serious. In other words, she wasn't. Um, she was just considering. Oh, these are just kind of my journal. This is my writing for my own personal. But she realized later that wow, this must mean real a lot to me because it was one of the things I grabbed. You know. So um, so yeah. Anyways, house was burned down. <laughs> so this proverb is: Oh, I built a house for my enjoyment, and it burnt down. Um, and we see that in this world, uh, that's what people are doing. It's a, a lot of plan making, a lot of plan executing going on in this world. And people say, okay, well, I, I, I made a plan for my enjoyment, whatever. I, I went on some, went to some exotic destinations or I right, bought some fabulously or went on this fabulous cruise boat cruise you know here and there and um i invested in the stock market and uh whatever so many different things people do and um still uh they remain dissatisfied so oh i i did all this and still i'm dissatisfied and that's the nature of material um plans they don't satisfy us. Kama dinam katita katita palita dorni desha te sham jata maina kurunatapa no pishanti utsri jaitan atiyapate sampratam labdi buddhis twamayata sharanam abaya mam yukshatmidase. So, Madhavan Japuri, one of our great acharyas, he's praying. He has this wonderful verse and saying that in so many ways I have um, tried to fulfill. You know, my lusty desires, my material desires. And he said, they brought me no happiness. But on, a, on I've been going trying to very shamelessly fulfill these desires. But now my intelligence has, what? Awoken. My intelligence has awoken. Um, and now, Krishna, I'm, I'm, I'm um, praying to you. I'm running to you. Please engage me in your service. So, so in other words, this, the conditioned soul of making all these plans to be satisfied, trying to fulfill material desires. But then when the intelligence, um, you know, when the light switch is turned on, <laughs> right? When the light switch is turned on in one's consciousness, one realizes, hey, you know, I'm, I'm not going to invest in this anymore. I'm going to invest in something else. And I'm going to invest in Krishna consciousness or serving Krishna. Um, so, and uh, and then sometimes people say, "Okay, well, this is, well, I mean, the house burns down, and you just build another one. What's what's a big deal, right?" <laughs> or, "Hey, well, that cruise didn't work out, so maybe try another one, right?" Or, whatever, that girlfriend, that boyfriend, that spouse, or whatever. Um, that didn't work out, or that exotic destination wasn't exactly what you thought it was, so try another one. You know, there's plenty of options out there. Just keep on trying. Um, and in relation to that, you have this, uh, this principle or of uh, uh, Bhava Sagar. So Bhava Sagar, it means the ocean of, of 
birth and death, but also means the ocean of change. It means everything's always changing. So you may talk to someone, they say, oh, you know, you're talking to a family member, you're talking to a friend or something. Oh, yeah, how's it going? Yeah, everything's going good, you know. And, you know, Mary, she, she just got a new job and, you know, just moved into a nice, you know, two-story place, cheap rent. Uh, Uncle Billy, you know, just got a, got a new dog, right? Um, yeah, it was, you know, George just got out of prison, you know, he was there for a few years, but yeah, he was, you know, seems to be doing well now, and, you know, you're just kind of talking, and, and every, you know, more or less, materially, everything seems to be kind of working out, and doing good, and not that many big, you know, disasters or tragedies, right? But then, you know, just give it a little time, you know, Bubba Sagra, just <laughs> give it a little time. Well, yeah, hey, how's it going? Well, you know, Susie, yeah, she... Yeah, Bob's back in jail, you know, they decided to, you know, try to rob that bank again, and, and, um, yeah, you know, and, I mean, they were kind of old, but, you know, so-and-so just had a heart attack, you know, found him there. So it's like, it's always changing, you know. Do the, the, the dog, Fred, got, you know, whatever, ran away from home or something. So it's always changing. Um. So, so therefore, the, throughout the Srimad Bhagavatam, and you know, Narada Muni's teaching us, and so many great sages and saintly persons are teaching us in the Bhagavatam, that instead of investing in all these material plans, just invest in spiritual plans, invest in spiritual life. Because although we may be um, having to deal with the Bhava Sagar, the ocean of change and everything changing, but we are investing in our time and we're investing in our energy and we're investing in our body and our intelligence and whatever we can in the best way that will be beneficial for ourselves and others. <coughs> and not just, you know, kind of trying to depend on all these material situations that inevitably always, you know, something happens down the road. Um, And that will actually bring the real, um, you know, satisfaction, enjoyment that we're, that, that people are searching for. Just like one time Prabhupada, he was, he was going to go to Russia. Uh, but, dev but, but devotees were saying, oh, it's so cold there. So cold there, right? And it does get cold in Russia. We don't know what cold is here in San Diego, <laughs> especially in comparison to Russia. It's really cold. I mean, Vijay Prabhu was giving a class the other day, and he said the devotees, he would visit Russia sometimes, and the devotees would tell him that you would, let's say this, we'll, we'll give this example, I like it better, but you, you take it, you could take a cup of water, and you throw it, you know, down onto the ground, and before it hits the ground, it turns into ice. Mm -hmm. You know, that's how, Texas. Texas, mm -hmm. also in, uh, Minnesota. Texas, Minnesota. Hmm. Cold. <laughs> yeah, cold. Minnesota, Texas. Mario saying you throw a bucket out of the window and it freezes. <laughs> it's cold. <laughs> um so and then, you know, devotees say, Oh prop, it's so cold. You know, don't go there. You know, come here. It's warmer, you know, it's mango season here, wherever it was. And trying to one time go Vinda Dasi out of her, you know, enthusiasm. Hey, prop, you know, it's mango season, come on and Prabhupada came, it was actually wasn't mango season, you know. Yeah, she just wanted Prabhupada to come. <laughs> Anyways. But they were telling Prabhupada in another case that don't go to Russia, it's cold, come here, mango season. So then Prabhupada said something interesting. He said, well, he said, preaching, he says, this is the real sweet mango. He said, this is sweeter than any mango you could ever have, you know, preaching. So I'm going to go to Russia. So he went. And then from there, there's a whole story, right? how he met that boy, and then, you know, eventually that boy, anyways, it's a long story, but Christian consciousness spread there. Um, so that enjoyment that we, uh, you know, we want to experience is, is fully there in, in Christian consciousness, and uh, just like in, Maha in Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's pastimes, you have this in relation to mangoes, but Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, I think he, he threw a seed down, immediately sprouted a tree, right? And then it was a mango tree. And then a bunch of nice mangoes 
amazing mangoes <laughs> immediately uh, grew and uh, was and they're ready and uh, these mangoes were really big and they had no seed I don't know if they had skin to them, but skin. no skin no seed just huge <laughs> says the devotees you know offered to Krishna and the devotees would uh, engage in you know, chanting and dancing and then they'd have these wonderful mangoes so in so much in so many ways <coughs> you know people are trying to enjoy you know all the you could say the mangoes of sense gratification um, but you know coming to spiritual life that's when you get y y you could actually experience the real you know nectar right cheto darpanam marjanam bhava maha dava nirvarpanam shreya kaiva vachandaka vitaranam vidya vidu jivanam what's that one um Anan anandam buddhivardhanam it's the the nectar which we're always anxious for. That's in Krishna consciousness. And uh, when it's saying here that Narada Muni, um, I mean, now uh, that's Vidura, is inquiring from Maitreya that you spoke about the sons of Prachinibar. He informed me that they could satisfy Krishna by chanting a song sung by Lord Shiva. What did they achieve in this way? So Narada Muni instructing the Brachetas in their meditation on Krishna and their devotional service, engaging in Krishna consciousness. In other words, engaging their full body, mind, words, everything in Krishna service. That's what Narada Muni was doing. Um, that's what he was instructing them to do, Brachetas, and they, and, and they did it. So in other words, they got the message. <coughs> and uh, we may get the message slower or faster, you know, to engage fully in Krishna service. But eventually we should really try to understand that message. We should really try to get it. And what does that mean? It means that there is the, the proof someone has understood is that their, their activities will change. They'll have transformation. In other words, they'll stop using their body and mind and, and, and energies in certain ways, means materialistic ways, and then they'll engage it in, in Krishna conscious ways. Just like the principle of understanding, I mean, let's say that somebody, this is an example, but let's say somebody is, uh, is uneducated and uh, is uneducated in, in relation to what a diamond is, right? So they have a diamond. That happens, actually. Dharma Sage Prabhu is fond of telling this story, but of a story about that, which is, I'll just briefly, but there was a man, South Africa. He was a farmer, right? Living right next to a river. And um, he was, and there was a whole uh, diamond, you know, craze going on. People were mining for diamonds and finding them. So the man said, you know what, I'm living on this farm, and let me get out of here, right? I'm going to go, I'm going to go on my hunt for diamonds, right? So then, uh, so then he does that. Yeah, he's, yeah he's, he sells the land to one other man, and then he takes off. All right, diamond hunt, you know, going, going. And then, you know, he never finds a diamond, and whatever happens to him happens, right? Bhava Sagar. <laughs> Sad story. <laughs> no. <laughs> well, with that guy it is. And then the other guy who bought the property, he's on the property, right? And, you know, he's there, you know, simple guy, farm, whatever, farming. You know, goes down to the river and, you know, picks up this cool-looking stone and, you know, puts it on his fireplace and just kind of hanging out. And then, then another friend comes by and, you know, they're having dinner or whatever, hanging out. And, hey, you want to go down by the river? Yeah, let's go down by the river. And then, you know, the friend's educated in relation to... And then he goes down, and, you know, they're hanging out, and his friend goes, hey, what are all those? Yeah, I don't know. Look pretty nice, but <laughs> the farmer guy. And the guy says, oh, that's a, you know, those are diamonds, you know, valuable diamonds. Oh, really? Oh, I didn't know that. Okay. And, and then he goes up, and, you know, they're having dinner or whatever, and then he looks, the, the educated man, you know, looks at the fireplace, and he sees this big diamond, you know. It turns out to be one of the most well, uh, one of the most rare in the world, and the guy bought a property just full of diamonds, you know. But that other guy, Wait, looking for, looking for him. Yeah. So, you know, if somebody has a, 
very uh, expensive item, diamond, or, you know, sometimes people, they buy collectibles like yard sales, thrift stores, you know, it happens all the time. And they're just there and, you know, they're living in poverty and some slum and, you know, living off of uh, Top Ramen and, you know, Coca-Cola or something and wishing they had more money. And But it's just right there. It's right there. But they can't see it. So, um, so similarly, the process of Krishna consciousness, um, it 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 will uh, award us, you know, everything we need, everything we want, you know, for our happiness. Um, but sometimes we can't see it; it's difficult to see. Uh, and aside from it being difficult to see. <laughs> sometimes the nature of Krishna conscious or specifically the holy name it says right it's like chintamani so in other words it fulfills desires Krishna fulfills desires so if we go to Krishna with certain desires like material desires those may be fulfilled <laughs> but Krishna is 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 able to not just fulfill material desires but any spiritual desires we have so that's the tough thing too, because not in in some cases people may not be able to see it, or we may not be able to see it. In other cases, we see it, we understand it to a degree, but um, we're wanting the wrong things, right? Or we're not cultivating the right things, and therefore we're getting the wrong things or things that are lesser. And as Prabhupada would give a very graphic example, he would say. A man goes to a, a king, right? Before there was a lot of kings, right? Goes to a king. The king could give him anything he wants, right? Or you go to the president. You know, like the president of the United States. You go to the president of the United States, and he says, hey, uh, you're a good citizen. You're a good guy. I'm going to, you know, whatever you did, you did some noble thing for, the, for some noble cause. So, you know what? I'm going to give you whatever you want. Anything material that I have, I'm going to give you. What do you want? So probably give the example going to king or president. And the man says, well, you know, I'll just take a little you know, pinch of ashes. Is that right? Just give me some ashes from your fireplace, you know. <laughs> well, I guess some people, I got ashes from the president's fireplace. Oh, great. But in essence, it's not valuable. So going to Krishna and wanting material things is like that. It's not valuable. So... So best is to understand um, the nature of Christian consciousness for what it is and what it can, what it can, what it um, be in it for the right reasons. Or just like Sri the Prophet, like there's many people who chant the holy names of Krishna, right? The Sahajiyas in India, being those, the, those who ch take Christian consciousness cheap, don't follow many principles. But also, like one time Sri the Prabhupada, he met this man, and the man. He told Prabhupada that, oh, sh oh, oh, Swami, he was in India. Swami, um, I'm getting people to chant Hare Krishna. I have hundreds of people, I don't know, maybe thousands, but I have hundreds of people chanting. But uh, we're, what, we're, what we're chanting for is we're chanting for the betterment or for the health or to cure disease. To cure disease, you know, of, of, of ourselves and others. And, and then, um, and so the man went on and he said, Similarly, Swami, you're also getting people to chant uh, the holy names, Hare Krishna. So we should just combine. We should just join together. And, you know, we'll work together. And, and then Prabhupada said, no. <laughs> Prabhupada told the man, no. He said, this is against our principle. He said, we do not, we are servants of the holy name. He said, we're not engaging the holy name in our service. So he just declined. <laughs> Interesting. My spiritual master tells that maybe he was there at the time or something, but probably. Um, so similarly with the human body, the human body is, is, a, is an instrument that could help us um, attain Krishna consciousness. And um, using it otherwise is just like the like the un uneducated person using you know the dime a diamond for a paperweight while they're living in poverty you know um, it's just not a great thing to do <laughs> it's, it's not the best thing to do um, although it's an option 
so uh, so here also in um, Srila Prabhupada's quote in the Bhagavad Gita saying it's very rare you know so mil out of mil millions of people one may be interested in learning what is and be interested in attaining success in spiritual matters so for those of us who are trying to <laughs> you know I mean um those of us who, yeah, devotees and engaged in, in preaching the glories of the holy name and trying to bring people to Krishna consciousness, um, we shouldn't be surprised when, <laughs> when, when people don't take it. It's like, oh, well, big surprise, you know. Um, because it's rare. Just like we have these cards, these contact cards, and devotees are using them, and they've come in handy, you know. People have contacted devotees and come around and just... Anyways, Vijay Prabhu told me, in relation to this um, Manushyanam Sahasre Shu, you know, it's very rare. <laughs> he gave this guy a contact card, and you know, he thought, well, it's a nice guy, and contact me or whatever. And <laughs> the guy just got a book, and so you know, Vijay Prabhu is like packing up things, going home, and then he gets a text from this guy. Hey, I just met your man, and you know, <laughs> I was gone, you know. So then the guy says, Yeah, you know what? I, I thought about it, and I. Just wondering if I could return that book, you know. <laughs> and Vijay told, <laughs> Vijay Prabhu told him, you know what? Well, I already left, so you know, it's kind of too late and good. You know, it's on the guy's shelf. <laughs> but then again, I guess on a positive note, um, there's so many people who will who will take to Krishna consciousness and 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 um, you know benefit and. Just like we have this boy, Dmitri, his name is. Uh, Vijay Prabhu met him on book distribution recently. He's from Russia originally. He's here on a visa, going to school. and Very nice person. Uh, came to the lounge. Uh, really interested. Tried to st started chanting Japa. Reading the Bhagavad Gita. He bought a Krishnamurti. Little, you know, he said, oh, I want to offer incense. And can I buy a little you know, from the gift shop? He's a really nice guy. He says he likes to fast. I said, all right, well, you like to fast? Well, you could add the chanting, too. Anyway, he's a really nice guy. So many people like that um, will benefit. So although it's rare, we shouldn't think, well, you know, it's so rare, you know, better not try to, to help. But even if it's so rare, it's the duty of the devotees to go and try to, <laughs> you know, try to find those rare people, you know, and it's possible. And it's happening all over the world. Um, <coughs> and uh, and in the process of, of of doing that, you know, trying to spread Krishna consciousness, trying to offer the most you know valuable thing to people. Um, of course, it's very you know one of the nartas actually Bhaktivinoda Thakur talks about is 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 misconception philosophical misconceptions it's an it's an anarta um, so an anarta that uh, one philosophical misconception is that well i mean Srila Prabhupada, he, he he spoke you know people th maybe think like this oh Prabhupada spoke quite strongly and he did you know listen to the morning walks on juhu beach and and read Prabhupada's books and, and you know speak strongly about the bogus incarnations and so on so, um, and for devotees to mention that it's not a—it's devotees to repeat as Sri the Prabhupada's repeat. It's not a fault. Like, like in the Bhagavatam, Shukadev Goswami he criticizes the materialistic householders, right? It just you know in so many ways, and and it's not a fault. Um, so, in other words, uh, they have a saying: to call a thief a thief is not a problem. You know, it's a, a, if he's a thief, he's a thief. So, and, and this is a problem in Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur's days because he was a very strong preacher and there was all these devotees, upper sampradayas, these kind of deviant groups and, you know, devotees around, you know, a lot of sentimentality going on and they would criticize him. They would criticize him for criticizing others. <laughs> um, and, yeah, his axe preaching. Prabhupada said that. He said, oh, my Guru Maharaj, he was, uh, they call him an axe preacher, you know, just chop, chop, cut, cut, cut. 
And then Prabhupada said, some of my god brothers, they, they would criticize him for that. You know, it would be a little critical. And he said, anyone who did that, they, they fell down, they left. Um, so in relation to that, uh, Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur, he gave an example that a thief, it means he just stole something. After he steals something, he flees. You know, he's running. And while he's running with the stolen goods, he starts pointing to other people and saying, thief, 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 you know. To deflect um, attention away from himself and to, you know, and, and to put the attention on, uh, on others. Oh, I'm not a thief. They're a thief. Yeah. <laughs> So he said that sometimes the, the, the people who were criticizing him, you know, for preaching in a certain way, acts preaching, or just speaking the truth, really, um, they would say, oh, oh he, you know, he's wrong, he's wrong, he's wrong, to deflect, you know, the attention away from their own faults, their own problems. So um, that also could happen in, you know, nowadays, oh, well, you know, they're, 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 you know, he's speaking like this or like that or s too strongly. And um, in other words, this, this, the, 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 um, the tendency to just, okay, the problems are there, right? N not with me. Now, someone may be a kind of as it is man or as it is woman. In other words, they just repeat the message as it is, right? So in other words, they don't have a problem with this, you know, direct kind of chopping technique. But still, that tendency may be there that, okay, well, let me, let me focus or broadcast the faults of others, then I don't have to worry about myself. You know, thief, 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 thief. Okay, well, what about me? So, um, so in order to, you could say, properly represent Prabhupada and, and properly, let's say most effectively, distribute Krishna consciousness, not only do we have to um, not criticize others who, you know, preach the message as it is or have a problem with that, because, you know, in other words, we have to stand for the truth. Not only do we have to stand for the truth, but we also, you know, maybe our duty, maybe our service to, you know, correct others and find find the faults and try to help others in that way. But we also have to be introspective. And, um, and uh, try to purify ourselves also. That's a very important point. And um, <coughs> in this way, we will be <laughs> following in the footsteps of, right, these great souls, yogis in devotion, they never return to this material world, which is full of miseries. They attain the highest perfection. Will be fallen in their footsteps, and by their mercy, by their grace, by their you know good wishes, will be able to attain what they what they have attained. You know, pure love for Krishna and so on. So it's fully available. We just have to, you know. There's those footsteps. Of course, we don't imitate, but you know they have this idea of falling in the footsteps. Okay, the person walked from here to here. I fall in the footsteps. Doesn't mean imitate, but means follow the path they chucked out. Not that I kind of like <laughs> go here or kind of <laughs> go there, or, you know, just follow. Then it's all available. So, all right. Does anybody have any um, questions or comment? Yes. Um, well, you know, you devotees, you have this saying, Paramahansa. Yeah. And, uh, you know, you filter out the material and you just extract the pleasant. So you accept this because you were saying how, you know, this material world's full of miseries. And, okay, you just adjust that. You accept that there's miseries. And you filter those out and you extract the spiritual happiness. Well, if it's all right for you to filter and extract and just take the essence, I do the same thing in the material world. Sure, there's difficulties. People die getting out of bed or in the bathtub. I filter out the miseries and I just take the happiness. Yeah, yeah the cruise didn't work out, but my dog is great. 
Yeah. You know, so the example, so as, why do you have the right to filter and extract what you find pleasing and you call it spiritual, you call it, give it whatever name you want. Well, why can't I use the same kind of mechanism? Yeah. I filter out the miserable and I take what's happy. There's some happiness. Yeah. All right. Yeah, there's, um, there's, uh, you know, this, this verse, Mamu Peta Punar Janma Dukal and Mishashatam, uh, you know, the material world's full of misery and everything. I mean, it's because you have this verse, and then on the other hand, you have Prabodhananda Saraswati, you know, great devotee Lord Chaitanya, right? The uncle of uh, Raghunath, what is it? Gopal Bhatta Goswami, yeah. Great, you know, te- wonderful devotee, pure devotee. And he says, he has another verse that, oh, you, if you get the sidelong glance of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, then the whole world, you know, Vishram Purna Sakaiti, you know, it's just full of happiness, right? And, you know, on and on and on. He describes different um, characteristics of somebody who has the mercy of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. So, so what is it? Is it full of misery <laughs> or is it full of, of, of happiness? Well, pr- for Prabhupada Saraswati, and he says that if someone gets Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's mercy, then it's full of happiness. <coughs> Which means that if somebody's trying to be happy without God, without Krishna, then yeah, it's full, full, full of misery. I mean, there's some little temporary dream-like ideas of happiness, but it's not real happiness. But if someone's trying to connect with Krishna and Krishna consciousness, then full of happiness. So, in, but in terms of extracting, oh, hey, you guys are extracting, why can't I extract? Yeah, I mean, <laughs> people are trying to do that. But the question is, well, what is there to extract? I mean, it's like, how much is there to extract? I mean, it's like, well, really try to extract. I mean, Pilad Maharaj, he says, right, Punashtarva to Charvananam, right, chewing the chewed, like a piece of gub- bubble gum, you know, how much is there, there's only so much to extract. <laughs> what's your, what's your <laughs> yeah, there's not much range. So, but, you know, unfortunately, you know, that's what people are working with. It's kind of like, hey, that's what I'm working with. And they, they try their best, you know, to, to attract, uh, extract something, whatever that may be. Um, and um, so, you know, to do that, you could say is natural, you know, we're, we're pleasure-seeking beings. We try to extract, right, whatever our situation is. But the Vaishnavas are saying, okay, you're trying to extract, you know, the essence, <laughs> according to your conception, but it's, n- it's, it's, it's like, it's, th- there's not much there. So just try to be a, p- <laughs> be a paramahamsa, try to extract the real essence of life, you know, Krishna consciousness. And therefore, okay, here, take this book. Hey, come to the temple. Hey, take some prasadam. Hey, why don't you try chanting japa? Hey, why don't you, you know, and try to engage them. And then they'll kind of realize, hey, all right, I'm trying to extract all this material pleasure, but hey, I'm going to try to go for the spiritual now. So that's the anyways. That's my second question. And then I'm done. You know, you said that we have to be careful when we approach Krishna, because if we have material desires, Krishna will satisfy those, but we won't get Krishna. And if we if we approach Krishna to fulfill our spiritual desires, Krishna will fulfill those. Well, hey, hey, I'm approaching Krishna. And he's not fulfilling either one. I'm not getting my material desires solved. I got my so many issues that he's not solving. And he's not, you know, solving my spiritual issues. So what's up with that? Either or, but I'm getting none. Yeah. <coughs> uh, yeah, there was, uh, <coughs> there was a time, I think, uh, yeah, it was Bhavananda Maharaj. He was going to Srila Prabhupada and he was, you know, voicing some concerns about something going on that he didn't like so much at the time. I think it was in Mayapur and and you know, he wanted Prabhupada to see if he could do something about it, change it, this and that. And and Prabhupada was going on explaining to him that you know, one lesson in this world is that we can't control much. I mean, we can tr- something, you know, a little something, but you know, not not a lot, not much, you know. Um, so, anyways, Prabhupada was communicating to him 
some of these principles and he w- and and Prabhupada is saying that you just depend on Krishna and uh, maybe you can add some details to this but you, you just depend on Krishna and Krishna will work things out Krishna will work things out right and then and then you know Bhava, Man- Bhava Nanda Swami so and then he you know more or less reluctantly accepted what Prabhupada said and he bowed down and he was getting up to leave and then you know then Prabhupada slammed his which Prabhupada did, it's not like Prabhupada was slamming his hand on the desk all the time. Prabhupada did it sometimes as a teaching method. But and Prabhupada slammed his hand on the desk and then he and then he said, But on Krishna's time, not your time. So um we can't demand, you know, oh Krishna, well hey I got this problem or solve it or hey I want this, I want that and hey why you know why aren't you answering my prayers, Krishna? But sometimes Krishna's reluctance to answer our prayers is the way Krishna wants to respond to us. Respond he's responding. To yeah, he's responding, but not the way that I, I may, you know, expect or want or, or prefer. Just same with the spiritual master. The spiritual master, it's not that the spiritual master, I mean, he, res- he may respond to your question or to your, to whatever, Sometimes, I mean, Prabhupada, you know, sometimes by not responding or b- by responding very short or, you know, whatever it may be. But it, but in relation to Krishna, sometimes, yeah, it's a fact. He doesn't respond how we uh, may like or prefer. But this not responding is actually a way to increase our our eagerness to, um, to be, it, yeah, connected with him. Because if, you know, every time we call, Krishna comes and, all right, yeah, hey, I call and Krishna's here. But if we're calling and, you know, oh, hey, I'm <laughs> and there doesn't seem to be a response, then, you know, all right, let me try harder. You know, I, I, I must not be trying hard enough. Or, yeah. Or the example is given, if you have lots of money, a mil- let's say, of course, a million dollars nowadays, you know, well, a million dollars, but, but let's say you have five billion dollars, right? and you lose three billion dollars. That's a lot. You still have two billion, but you lost three billion. Or let's say you lost four billion, you just have one billion left. Now, for people who do that, they're always thinking, okay, how am I going to get it back? And they're always meditating. So so if we, we may f- experience that some, you know, our prayers being answered on some level, we may experience that. And then, or some type of connection with Krishna, we may experience that. But then, if we don't experience it, then it will increase our eagerness. So, um, yeah. But this is also a sign of just somebody with not faith. I mean, so, oh, well, th- he's not answering. Well, m- let me just give up. That means the person's not really. <laughs> just like if you really, if, if, so, if, if a mother really loves a son, right? Like, there's a story of this devotee in L.A., I don't know to say names, but he was really bad. <laughs> Going in and out of jail, you know, drug, blah, blah, but just really, really bad, you know. And the mother was just so, such a mother, <laughs> unconditional, you know, really trying to help the guy all the time, you know. Even some people would say he has a little bit too much, you know, helping him financially. And, you know. and then over, like, years of him, you know, being a bad guy, <laughs> bad boy, Eventually, she's a devotee also. Eventually, he came around, you know. And anyways, he became a nice devotee and initiated and all that. So, um, so, so my, my point being, Kanai Balai, my point being is that uh, if we really are interested in Krishna or Krishna consciousness, we don't give up. And that's one of Maya's businesses. She tests people. Hey, are you are you coming to Krishna to serve him? Or are you coming to try to get something or trying to are you really serious? So anyways, those are just some No, it's not Kanibala. No, no, no. No, no, it's not Kanibala. Somebody else, but it is. All right. So do you mean to say that Krishna if we go to Krishna, then he'll give us what we need instead of what we want and he'll help us purify our desires. 
Yeah, one thing about this in the Chaitanya Charitamrita, there's a very wonderful section where it says, I have to look that up and, and read it sometime, you know, share it. But anyways, I'm sure devotees read it also. But um, it says that someone may come to Krishna with material desires and Krishna may fulfill them. <laughs> but he, 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 that's not the most intelligent thing, you know, the person coming to Krishna for that. But Krishna fulfills them in such a way as the person doesn't want him again. And and, he, and then, aside from that, he encourages them in Krishna consciousness to make more and more progress. So, so we may come to Krishna for his material desires, and he may fulfill them, but he fulfills them in such a way we don't want them again. <laughs> or, yeah, so. Just. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. You know, Marsh, and you, you know, you pray. Oh, you know, let me have this girlfriend or something or whatever. You know, and pray, pray, and then Krishna says, "All right, hey, you want that? Okay, you're really serious about it. Okay, here." But then you, you know, you get whatever you want. But then, yeah, it just causes you problems, suffering. So, you know, okay, all right, I'm done. So, okay. Glenn has a nice mask on. Right? Nice. Anyways. Kantraj Shimad Bhagavatam ki jai Shri Prabhupada ki jai